our kind of goal here. And I took the time to kind of make a, a daily agenda for us. Don't sweat the times, that was just really for my own benefit to kind of go, okay, if we do this, this, and this. And I gave lots of wiggle room for here. But before we start here, I want to just give a big, a little history on the tools themselves and where they came from. You guys, I think most of you guys have read the Unplugged Woodshop book, so this is nothing, no new information. But I just thought, So I cut up a bandsaw blade, rigged that thing up, and it was horrible. It cut really fast, but it would just be like, there was no way to make it cut straight. So fast forward. Make this longer again. So this was the first one one of the first ones, I should say, um, that he made me. Because the first one, actually, I say one of the first ones, because I noticed this one it did have the two holes in it. First generation. Um, the frame doesn't have handles, so handles were pretty early on my list of what I could do in my own mind to make this thing look better. So the first one I had was a lot wider than this, more like a Nautilus machine. And at the time, when I still the toes, so this was the first kind of real version that I've made to fit this first generation of saw plates, <clears throat> this one. And as you can see, just compare it to the, the evolution here. But nowadays, we do a haunched single tenon. By haunch, you just create the shoulders. We'll dissect a little closer on, on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, probably, when we get into the joinery. So anyway, so I have my frame saw. At the time, I was just I went bought some big box store, uh, or I had to go to this metal supermarket here in Ontario and buy uh, just uh, tubular steel. Cross cut it with my back saw, cut the curve off the shelf hardware made to market. Fast forward again. Now we have these nice, actually made hardware with all the, like real components, and that's what's in your bag your bench is on the actual, the, the last generation of, of these parts instead of just, you know, off the, off the hardware show back and so again. Once it was to a certain point where I was happy with it, regardless of the hardware, it was still working for me, but um, it was still hard to cut straight. Um, it was still, you know, saw drift is still the problem whether you have a band saw, a mill, um, or a frame saw. My first thing was to pick up this tool and I grabbed the eighth inch iron, the smallest iron that they make for this, and I plowed an eighth inch groove down the side of my board. And not only was it a visual cue that made it a hell of a lot easier to follow, but <clears throat> excuse me, I found that the saw would kind of stay within that groove, within that eighth inch groove, and it wasn't, but it wasn't foolproof at the time. It's still not foolproof either, but I mean it's much better. That was just a saw plate. If that was just the saw plate bolted to the side like that. And I didn't think it through to the body at the earliest stages. My the first curving plane looked like a molding plane, which is a block of wood with a, a rabbit cut in the side with the saw plate screwed to the side. Of it. I don't have that one anymore. But um, that's kind of what it looked like. And you can still do it that way. You can put your rabbit in, give it a just a come almost like our jack plane. Ago in the class here. They don't have, some of you guys have toes, but uh, a lot of them just make this kind of gentle sh shape. So you can easily do that. So this is one of the earlier versions I had, and um, it was just more like a hand saw. Because as much as it kind of felt and looked like a hand plane, it was definitely a hand saw. So that was an early place that I have just through the years. I've made different designs when I was working out different things. These ones are shorter, they wouldn't have a fence on, so if you're using any templates like this, uh, working on them, then you have to add some more down here. Squaring it to your first face, just like old dimension stock, reference face, reference edge. When you're planing that edge, uh, as soon as you notice which way they're planing, which way the grain is running, Square line, square line, 
square bottom edge for reference. Use a combination square and your saw plate from the kits to accurately mark the saw in both positions. And that's really critical. If you're, I mean, if you if you miss it by a whisker, we can file the saw plate and open up the saw nut holes. It'll still be trapped between the two screws. It won't move around up. We have a blade out. Lunchtime, we break for lunch. <clears throat> and um, I don't know, John or Richard, if you guys bring lunch, but um, Tiffany brought like a, a feast with a, with her today, and I think everyone's invited to join in. Um, afternoon, how we'll start our afternoon, let's cut the rabbit. We'll make the rabbit in the blank. You have to have it. I think it's about a half inch, maybe five eighths of projection here. But just so the saw nuts aren't too close to the edge. So you almost want to work backwards. But, um, and then the fence is projecting below the uh, teeth. Exactly. By, by another five eighths or so. As much as you have on this blank, I would. And then if you don't want it to be that thick, then I would cut it down. Soft plates are in the pit. So use that as your, as your tool to lay it out and make sure your saw nuts are high enough off the body. And that will be a little bit This is also interesting. Can you see this one? I it's obvious. I canted this one, meaning I have a little more exposure here than there. When in use, I tend to put more pressure on my back hand so the front's not bogging down, plowing the wood. Or maybe not, I don't know. You know, you might come up with something. 
totally unique design, I'm not sure. Any questions? Prepare the stock. That's where you're starting. Just get it all closed with the biggest cut you can. You know, this way in the vise, one cut, two cut, to meet that big drill hole I put here. From there, then it's time to start shaping. <clears throat> and so we have all our rasps laid out here. When you take one of these rasps, clear your bench before you start using them. Don't touch rasps. Making it uh, square, close to square, you know, and uh, getting these two components. Better. 